The millionaire dressed up as a poor person and came to his fiancé's house. He will never forget what happened next. Friends have always called Jacob Green the professor. The guy didn't think it was offensive since he did get a good education from one of the best universities in the country. Moreover, the man's parents were scientists before they became successful business people. Many years ago, Deborah and August Green left the research institute to try their hand at commerce. It's worth saying that they did achieve impressive success in this field, earning their first million by the age of 35. Around the same time, their little son Jacob was born. He brought real happiness into the life of his parents. Despite the fact that the boy was surrounded by luxury and wealth from early childhood, he grew up to be a kind and simple guy. This was partially due to the fact that Jacob's nanny taught him to respect people regardless of their financial or social status. Having received an excellent education, the man got a job at his father's firm with the goal of eventually becoming his successor and taking over the reins from his father. In his spare time, the young businessman was involved in charity work. He helped orphanages and support centers for people in difficult life situations. Despite all Jacob's successes, his parents were very worried that he was still single. But the young man kept putting off marriage. Son, we're not that young anymore, and we want to see our grandchildren. And it looks like you and your work are going to deprive us of this experience, Mrs. Green complained. Mom, please don't worry. I still have time to get married. I'm not that old, Jacob answered, looking down shyly. Sure, Jacob had many girlfriends during his student years. However, not a single one of them felt right for the role of his wife. Since Jacob always listened to what his parents had to say, after that memorable conversation with his mother, he started to bring women over to his home. He brought home women he knew or had at least some kind of relationship with. The man did it in the hopes that his parents would help him make a choice. However, pleasing the Greens was an extremely difficult task. More often than not, the candidates for the role of Jacob's wife turned out to be insufficiently educated for the Greens, or brought up with the wrong traditions, which was unacceptable for Jacob's family. But all the failed attempts to find a wife didn't discourage Jacob, and he still hoped to meet the woman of his dreams that his parents would also approve of. But time went on, and Jacob didn't get any closer to getting married. Once, when the man was at a restaurant with his friends, Halfway through dinner, he suddenly realized that he'd forgotten his cell phone in his coat, so he went to the coat check. Taking his phone, the guy was about to go to the table when he suddenly ran into a charming stranger. Oh, sorry, I'm so awkward. The girl babbled in embarrassment. It's not you, it's all my fault. I should have been careful, Jacob answered, confidently touching the stranger's hand. Looking at each other, the young people fell silent for a second or two. And then, without saying a word, they both laughed. When they finally calmed down, Jacob offered to exchange phone numbers so that he could properly apologize to the beautiful woman by taking her out to dinner at a cafe or a restaurant. The woman smiled and agreed immediately. Jacob spent the rest of the night thinking about the mysterious stranger that he'd met at the coat rack. The man was so distracted by his thoughts that all he did in response to any of his friend's questions was smile in confusion. Having returned home, Jacob went to bed, but he couldn't stop thinking about his encounter with the charming girl. The next day, Jacob barely managed to hold off until noon to call the number left by the beautiful stranger and ask her out. Jacob came to their meeting with a huge bouquet of flowers, which immediately won over the woman's heart. As it turned out, the charming stranger's name was Charlotte, and she was also from a wealthy family like Jacob. They had a pleasant conversation at the cafe and the woman shared that she had studied in London and spent several years living in Great Britain. Having learned that in her free time, Charlotte did charity work, the astonished guy was literally ready to marry her on the spot. The young people didn't even notice as time flew by, and then Jacob asked her if he could walk Charlotte home. She didn't respond, but she did tense up noticeably and turned the conversation in another direction. Jacob and Charlotte then agreed to meet again tomorrow, and Charlotte was going to take a cab home. That was the day when Jacob and Charlotte started dating, and unbeknownst to themselves, they dove deep into a romantic relationship. The young couple spent so much time together that they couldn't go unnoticed by Jacob's mom. Jacob, son, when will you introduce us to your girlfriend? Be a good son and invite her over for dinner. I'll make my famous roast, said Mrs. Green, 
who was eager to meet the woman who'd won over her son's heart. To the man's surprise, Charlotte was happy to agree to a dinner with his parents, making it clear that she was very serious about their relationship. Needless to say, the dinner went great and all the guests and hosts were pleasant and cordial. Mr. and Mrs. Green were very impressed by the son's girlfriend. She wasn't just pretty and smart, but she also had a good upbringing, which was one of the main criteria for the elderly couple when choosing a wife for their son. Thanks to funny jokes and interesting conversation, the evening quickly came to an end, and when Jacob went to see Charlotte off, Mr. Green gave him a thumbs up. A month went by, full of romantic experiences and passion. To make their meetings more comfortable, Jacob rented out an apartment for Charlotte, and she immediately moved in there. Having learned that Charlotte had taken several orphanages under her wing, Jacob immediately started making impressive transfers to her bank account. The guy felt very sorry for the unfortunate children, and he deeply respected what his beloved was doing to help them. But one day, something happened that made him question the sincerity of Charlotte's intentions. It happened when the couple was grocery shopping together. Jacob stayed behind to pay for the groceries while Charlotte went outside to wait for him. There, a beggar approached Charlotte with an outstretched hand, asking for money. Looking at the beggar with disgust, the woman rudely drove him away. Jacob, who accidentally got to witness this encounter, disapproved of his girlfriend's behavior. Oh, sorry, honey, he scared me. Poor thing, he crept up so quietly and I drove him away, said Charlotte, lowering her eyes apologetically. At first, Jacob didn't think too much of this incident. He called over the beggar and gave him the bag of groceries he just bought at the supermarket. Nevertheless, he couldn't shake off the feeling of unease and the emerging doubt he got after witnessing his girlfriend's strange behavior. Tormented by his doubts, Jacob decided to call the orphanage, which Charlotte was supposedly taking care of, and the foundation she had created. But to Jacob's disappointment, the orphanage's management have never heard of the boxes of fresh fruit or juices that Charlotte had allegedly bought for them. When Jacob directly asked his girlfriend about the situation, she didn't even flinch and simply replied that she must have made a mistake and sent the fruit, food, and clothing to some other orphanage or kindergarten. Charlotte's explanation seemed extremely suspicious, and so Jacob decided to get to the bottom of things, and he wanted to do it before things got too serious with Charlotte. To get it done, Jacob went to a private detective agency, which he'd heard about from someone he knew. To the surprise of the young businessman, the private investigator turned out to be a pretty woman named Emmy, who patiently listened to him, said, Well, Mr. Green, if you want to see everything for yourself, I suggest we arrange a small performance. Don't be alarmed, it won't be anything difficult, although you will have to put on makeup for this. Jacob only sighed sadly in response and put himself in the hands of the professional makeup artist and costume designers who made him into a beggar in less than an hour. Then, following Emmy's instructions, the young businessman sat down on a bench near Charlotte's rented apartment and began to patiently wait for her. The detective woman sat in a parked car nearby. She intended to film whatever would happen between Jacob, disguised as a beggar, and his girlfriend. When Charlotte finally appeared at the building, the beggar approached her with an outstretched hand and started begging for money. Get out of here, you disgusting bum. I won't give you a dime. Go ask somewhere else, Charlotte exclaimed rudely, pushing the beggar hard in the shoulder. Disguised as unfortunate, Jacob could barely hold back his tears. How is it possible? Does this mean that she's been deceiving me all this time? Thought the guy, afraid that the tears would wash away the makeup on his face. Well, at least now you know the truth, Mr. Green. It will take me about a week to gather all the necessary information, so please just keep acting normal as before and make sure you don't let Charlotte find out that you know everything, advised Detective Emmy, looking sympathetically at the sad Jacob, whose makeup was recently washed off. Needless to say, the young businessman felt like a fool, realizing that he got played by a beautiful gold digger. The week dragged on very slowly, and when Emily finally gave Jacob the folder with all the information she'd found, he was literally burning with impatience, wanting to quickly find out the whole truth. As it turned out, Charlotte was a scam artist who robbed wealthy men by tricking them into donating money for her so-called charity foundation. Her parents were actually alcoholics and not the wealthy people she talked about. Jacob was also surprised to learn that she actually did spend a lot of time in London, where she even had a legal spouse, 
who turned out to be a very wealthy man. She met him at one of the dating sites, and it was thanks to him that she got a good education and some money for beautiful things and makeup. But the man was smart, so he made Charlotte sign a prenup, according to which she wasn't entitled to any of his assets. Therefore, the woman came up with some plausible excuse and decided to return to her homeland, where she started looking for wealthy men in restaurants and other hot places. After hearing Emmy out, Jacob turned pale and then asked to be made up to look like a beggar again. Maybe you shouldn't do it, Mr. Green? Emmy asked cautiously when he was all ready to go. But Jacob shook his head and went to meet Charlotte. When the girl opened the door and saw the beggar on the doorstep, her first instinct was to call the police, but when Jacob took off his makeup and wig, Charlotte cried out in response and covered her eyes with her hands. She understood everything without words and didn't even try to make excuses. And when Jacob saw a spark of anger in the woman's eyes, he knew that Emmy's information was correct. He closed the door and slowly walked down the street, catching the surprised looks of passersby who felt sorry for the crying homeless man. Over time, Jacob got over Charlotte, and now he thinks about the whole situation with a smile. This is partially due to Detective Emmy's help, who turned out to have fallen in love with him the very moment they met. And it should be noted that her feelings were reciprocated. Jacob simply couldn't understand it at the time. But now he knows how important honesty is. But now he knows how important honesty is in a relationship based on love, mutual respect, and selflessness. Act.